Hi right, guys, how's it going? Uh, another quick-ish video. Um, uh, several um, different bits that James May has done. Um, his, uh, this is a, um, a program here with Oz Clark that we watched him first. Um, then after that, it's um, two clips of when James May was in Japan, which, if you haven't watched it, is it's definitely, definitely worth a watch because it's absolutely hysterical. Um, so, yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. If you could please, please hit the like button, share it. And subscribe because every like you give helps with the analytics for YouTube. Every subscription gets the word out. Other people will get to see other people will get to see my stuff, and it'll just help my channel grow that much quicker. So yeah, as always, thanks and enjoy watch. After three hundred yards, bear left. You know what you can do with that actually, which might amuse you if you touch the screen and go into the sort of setup thing. Change voice, yeah. so press change voice, and you can change it, I think, to an Irish person. After Why would 800 you want that? yards, 800. turn left, there you then go. turn right. And turn, turn right. right. Turn right. Now, that, and you think I sound cod Irish, what about him? He's put some actor from Yorkshire. Can you send us the biggest cod Irish jerk that we can get? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't, Captain. No, no. But, uh, I'm sorry, well, he will now. Oz Clark's not available, but we've got this Sean bag. <laughs> anyway, feel left free to change ahead. it into Mandarin. I guess it I um I've tried this and and I was on a long journey. Big being my girlfriend bored. Don't ask. Um and it was had to be the funniest car journey I have ever been on in my life. It's brilliant. Um currently I actually have Homer Simpson's voice on my sat nav. Because it's funny, why not? Um, so, yeah, I know what he's about to do. If, if you're on a long journey, or if you're on a journey, yeah, and you, you know, you don't need to look at the sat nav, you're not driving around little roads. Well, just don't do that. Turn the motor away. Got time to do it. Do it. Go for all the different languages you have on your sat nav, because some of them are absolutely hysterical to listen to. Tell you what, I will try these and you must tell me what they are. Okay. Después de 300 metros, aplicado a su destino. Metros is yeah, Spanish. Spanish. Well done. Yeah. Or right, this one. Meta apo triacosia metra flasetes ton proorismosas. Greek. Well done. Yeah. Intelligence change, I can't bear this. Now, you like this one. Chapter 70 yards. <laughs> that was that was obscene. <laughs> I put this on my sat nav for two hours to try to mow it, and I swear to God, it was more entertaining than any bloody game or whatever you do in the car on the long journey. It was just, it's honestly, try it. <laughs> what language is that? That's Romanian. Romanian. I think it's Romanian. <laughs> so every third word is shit. <laughs> that must be the word for yards or meters <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Everybody in the nation, turn your sat nav to Romanian. To ro yeah. <laughs> 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 If you know of 
any other language that's like this, that's this funny to listen to, please, please put a note in the comment and let me know because, you know, I'll try that out on my sat-nav next, but yeah. <laughs> please don't say it again, it's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> that's the um <laughs> the sad one but like i said honestly if you're able to you go on a journey and you're on long drive whatever I swear to god play different languages it is just it's great especially when you don't know what they're saying if you know what they're saying it kind of gives it away uh, this is the um first um japanese uh Adventures that James May did. Um, this is a, when I say luxury train, that kind of underplays it. Um, but it's in. If you see the inside of the train, it's 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 nicer than any anyone's house. I swear to God. But uh, yeah, let's, let's uh, see what he got to, gets up to now. Konnichiwa. <laughs> The Shikoshima's aesthetic has been dreamt up by Ken Okuyama, a designer who worked on the Ferrari Enzo and the Porsche 911, the 996 series with the funny headlights. There's something of the supercar about this train. But unlike a supercar, it's designed to go slowly. See what I mean? The 10 car train accommodates just 34 passengers in 17 suites. 10 cars, 34 people. You know, oh, I'm shit, mass, but. but ten, you know, it's basically two and a half people per carriage. Yeah, I'll put three people per carriage, so. That's in, insane. You know, train carriages aren't that small. Even, you know, normally they're not that small. But this, I mean, the detail they put into it. It's just uh, unbelievable. And every fixture and fitting has been meticulously designed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the traditional you bent woods to the hand-woven carpets made by a company who supply the Vatican. Vatican. Luxury like this, of course, doesn't come cheap. But <laughs> thankfully, awesome. the train's holding a press junket day to show itself off. And we've blagged our way on board. It is absolutely exquisite on here. All the details, the lights, the woodwork, the aluminium, the tablecloth. It's, it's just fantastic. You can stay on this train for up to four days, in which case the ticket will cost you a trifling £8,000. £2,000 each. £2,000 a day for one person. Fuck you know. That I don't spend two grand going away on holiday to in Cyprus. Yeah, that's just it the old saying you get what you pay for, I suppose. But yeah, you know, eight grand. But everything about it is fabulous. The Orient Express is often referred to as the Shikoshima of Europe. In a moment, I'm going to be served the first course of my French lunch made by a Michelin star Japanese chef. So, on a Japanese train, French food cooked by a Japanese chef. Why wouldn't you do Japanese food then? <clears throat> and in fact, here it comes now. You'd almost think we'd arranged it. Mm. Domo arigato. What? It's a... I've sneezed out bigger things and I've I've seen I've sneezed and picked my nose and pulled out boogers bigger than this. And more appetizing as well. It's just a 
streak and splat on a plate with flowers, vegetation, and something over the back there. Uh, I don't know. Donkey fucking testicles. Yeah, it's French after all. Hmm. Not quite sure that eight grand price tag. Uh, yeah. It's a sliver of raw salmon anointed with some leaves, a tiny little piece of spring onion, and a flour. And I don't know what that. I, I would say it's wasabi, but it's wasabi's green. I've no idea what that is because it's, it's grey and white by the look of it. Anyone's got any ideas? Put them in the comments. And that. I do read all your comments. Excellent. Ones, the ones that are spam anyway. Idiots that every single video is I'm not supposed to eat it. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with it? Wipe your nose with it. There's another media who want to Wipe film this tissue. food for this lunch. They can't eat. Somebody else wants to film my lunch? Yes. Why don't they get their own bloody lunch? <laughs> Tickets are 8,000. <000. laughs> Seriously, I'm not supposed to eat it. You're not supposed to eat. You are supposed to allow other people. Okay, so you have to stand up, and we have to let other media to come in and film. And anyway, it's the best compliment you can pay. She have to think, mm, that's nice. It's meant to be his. To yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely yeah, his advisor yeah, yeah. that but goes you round have to with him. other media as well, right? <laughs> Why didn't she tell him that? Hurry, hurry. Are they very angry? Yeah, the lady looked at me. She got this look. And she looked at me like as if I didn't explain to you. So there's really? other camera people on here. Right. So they all film the same Is lunch. On a toilet or something? Mm -hmm. So the other people are going to take pictures of it, say, look at the exquisite food on the Shikoshima train, but there's actually a bit missing because I <laughs> <laughs> it's, you ate. it's all your fault. You will have to do a comment on so. Okay, I will go and say, so sumimasen. Yeah. Do it, tashimashitu. No, you don't say the retouching no, no, myself. <laughs> you, you don't say the I'm sorry and you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sumimasen. Yeah, 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 no, I didn't no, no, mean no. to read. He's saying he's sorry to her. She actually looks offended. She looks offended that he's apologising. <laughs> eat, eat the salmon sake starter. Sumimasen. Eat the sake. Sumimasen. Ah, chef, sumimasen. Sumimasen about the salmon. Could you say I'm sorry about the salmon? Sumimasen. After the entire train had accepted my prostrate shame, the chef took pity on me and gave me some edible lunch. Edible? Edible? The yellow thing looks like soap. What? That clear thing is left looks revolting and there's a plain creamy looking wrapped in wham bars and, and looks like the chef's cut himself as he's been doing it really So there's cucumber filled with something that looks like vomit, probably from the last person that ate it, and something white and crispy that could be anything from pork to fish to Christ knows else what, after all it's French. And Two blobs of God knows what. I don't even particularly want to guess what that is. 
Though, of course, I was now too nervous to eat it. So, just to be clear, can James eat this food or not? Yes, so James can eat. I can eat this. I mean, come on. You're on an 8,000 quid train and you've got three plates of stuff you could put into a teacup and still have them left over on the top. That's, I mean... It's, it's, it's just nuts. You know, I get that it's, you know, fine dining and that stuff, but give me something that doesn't look like it's come from a doll's house and come out of certain different parts of body orifices. Food. Yes, you can eat. Can I have a glass of wine or does the New York Thank Times want to take a photograph of it? Am I allowed to eat that? Yes. yes. And that? Yes, and that? Mmm. You can mm. stick it in your mouth in one go. Mmm. Mm, that's nice. Mm. Yeah, that's nice. Can I have some more of what, what this came off, please? Otsukare Samides. Otsukare Samides. The train networks over there are so much better run than they are here, that's for certain. Trains that are considered late if they are more than five seconds from when, they're, when, they're, when they arrive. They consider that late and unacceptable. And the conductor will apologise to everybody, go around doing the bowing and stuff. And just, just, look, just look how clean the stations are. They're just so much better at this. And they've got a huge population in a tiny little area. And the place is obviously burst up bar, part, certain parts of Japan, obviously. But... Tokyo. Excellent. Okay, I've got another clip from this, which is this one. This one is, I'd say, if you see, it's got Jane's futuristic tour guide, leaves him stitched. This, I don't even know what you'd call it. Oh, have a look at this and you, you, you know, see what I mean. I decided that I'd like to go on a tour of Kyoto's historic shrines and temples. And of course, you can get a guided tour. You can follow someone with a sign on a stick, along with some Americans in funny trousers. But instead, I've decided to go for Robohon, your digital... Really? I mean, really? Digital, experimental, futuristic tour guide. Robohon, currently only available in Japan, is described by its makers as the future of robotics. They're packed with cutting edge tech, smartphone, HD projector. It's true that Japan and sort of that side of the world are so far ahead of us, technical-wise, that I, I think someone said it was we're 10 years behind them, behind Japan and stuff, technical, you know, with technology. I mean, this is going to show you. We're happy if we can make our phones work. You know, we think our phone's technical, or our car, you know, not having a key. Not saying that. And, most relevant to us, can give automatic tour guide information based on your location. Welcome, then, Hello. to the future. Hi. It's great to meet you. I'm Robohone. I'll be your good yeah, partner. Yeah, that wouldn't get annoying quickly, would it? How can I call you? How can I call you? Please write your nickname on my back screen. On your what? Pardon? Oh. Hang on a minute, Robohon, I have to get my children's TV presenter glasses out. I'm just going to put you down. Don't be alarmed. No, I'm 
I'm going to leave it. What shall I call myself for the purposes of this? Nickname, Jim. No, I've done that wrong. You've written your name wrong. Oh, no, I've written ben. Bim. I uh, got it. Oh, no, I'm... <laughs> That's just... scary and... massively useless. There you are. We think over here, England, we, we think I'm we are Bim. so amazing when it comes Google to Google. Google would at least say, so did you mean Jim? <laughs> but not Robo. <laughs> hey, Bim. Bim, guess what? Bim, guess what? What? Wow. Then you know what? It's about four o'clock now. I would have killed the thing by now. It would have been out the window and bouncing down the road. But not even that thing, it would get up and start fucking get chase you again. But that would get really irritating. Does anyone remember Furbies? Long time ago, end of the 90s, I know they came back not too long ago, but the original ones, they were so annoying. And you couldn't kill the damn thing. I put one in a freezer for a couple of weeks, took it out, let it the ice, it still fucking worked. I threw it downstairs and kicked it outside in the rain, walked back in, Still worked. In the end, uh, he kind of, it wasn't one Furby so much, it was then two. Then it didn't work. But I don't know what they made it of, but you know, you should, you should make bulletproof um, cars out of it. Well, brilliantly. Yes, it is. That's well, not a not really amazing fact I've had a watch since I was three, you idiot. <laughs> I'm starting to have reservations about Robohon's tour guide credentials. Yeah. Where are we going? Are you awake? No. No. If this actually so what makes it into it the programme, I'll know we were really what is it? it goes off when it feels like it, not when you actually After need it. After turning him off and on again, several times, Ro What is it with that? Turning things off and on again. It's the answer to everything. Turn it off, switch back on again. You ring up the helpline, a call centre, something, and the first thing that says, have you tried something on and off? Or off and on? Everything. Cars. TVs. Computers. If it doesn't work, you turn it off, turn it back on again, and it fixed. Who knew? But I'm I'm surprised they don't put that in the handbook for the for the item. Switch it off, switch it back on again. If not, give us a call. But the solution for everything: turn it off, turn it back on again. Oberhon finally finds something he wants to talk. I wonder if that would work for Chernobyl and Fukushima. Hmm. About. Ben, guess what? What? It would have been it would have been in the river. Uh, it would have been out the window, out the window and over the river and in the and what's river. What's that? Guess what? What? Yeah, that that would have been you just out said of the window. Digital. That. Oh, this really? Really? It has its own baby carrier. Don't think many men would walk around with that around their neck. If the, if the, the cord was around its neck, 
no problem. But I don't think many guys would walk around with that. Suspense is killing me waiting for Robohog to tell me something interesting. Having seen the film Lost in Translation, I do know that this particular Zen Buddhist temple, called Nanzenji, is where Scarlett Johansson once wafted around in wistful solitude. At least someone had the right idea. The film would have been great if she was wandering around wearing nothing. Or standing wearing nothing. I'm not fussy. What? Uh, uh, can you imagine you take that thing home? Right? You're on, you're in that certain part, certain part of Japan on holiday. Can you imagine renting one for the week? You take it home, put it on a table. You know, twelve one o'clock. You're doing it, misses. And then it starts going, mm, 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 mm. The fucking thing would be outside. It would be in outside in many, many pieces. Because that's just creepy. Traveling is kind of getting me excited. Okay, now... That is now definitely... Is it? I think one of the other tourists dropped him on his head. I would have dropped it out the window. <laughs> I can see people thinking, why it is just, that grown man goes off when it feels like it, impression. not when you actually want to know something. <laughs> You've probably realised by now that if you want to learn about Kyoto, you'll just have to look it up yourself. Get a book. Unless, of course, you'd like to know that Shijo Ahashi is a British <laughs> representative of Kyoto that crosses the Keimo River over Shiju Street. It's also called Jionbashi. Jim, are you tired? Yes. But it was fun, wasn't it? How about you, Jim? <laughs> Can you imagine if it started saying that at 12, 1 o'clock at night, you're doing the, doing the missus? Are you excited? It was a fun time, wasn't it? The, the Japanese can... Tell me how was it? <laughs> Tell me how was it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... Uh, I'm all for technology growing, but that is crossing the line and kind of pointless and very scary. I, I, that's because you can make something, doesn't mean you have to. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I've, I must say, I've, it, this program that it does, Our Man in Japan, if you haven't watched it, honestly, go and watch it, because it's fucking hysterical. Some of the things he, stuff, he does, it's absolutely brilliant. It's well worth watching. Um, yeah, I so said this is just a couple of clips. It, it, he's done numerous episodes of it, and it, honestly, go and watch it if you get the chance. It's honest, yeah. Right, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. If you would please like the video, so it helps the analytics for YouTube, and hit the subscribe button. As I say, I'm really trying to get my channel to grow, and it would mean a lot to me if you guys consider subscribing. Cheers, guys. Appreciate you watching. Stay safe. If you can't stay safe, stay legal. Take care, guys.